Hey, what's up? This is MarketAlchemist.Camp, where we learn Elixir and Phoenix by building things. Today, we're going to dig further into the Wallaby integration testing library that I introduced last time. It's got a lot of features that I didn't mention last time with just the very minimal quick start. Got some good feedback on Reddit, actually, of all places, from someone who's been using it in production for, I believe, six months. And there was some good news. First is the experimental driver support isn't actually as experimental as Wallaby's docs make it look like it is. Uh, headless Chrome or even non-headless Chrome can be run with Chrome driver and all of that is working fine. Apparently all of the functionality in Wallaby works with the Chrome driver. So Given that PhantomJS is already at its end of life, it still works, but there won't be any more updates. So it's a, it's a good idea to be moving to headless Chrome, and we're going to go over how to do that in this episode. First thing that we're going to need, though, is Chrome Driver. So if you Google uh, Chrome Driver or Chrome Driver Download, you'll get to this page at chromedriver.chromium.org and you'll have uh, options for what version of Chrome you have installed. If you don't have the right version, or if you don't have the same version of Chrome driver as Chrome, you will get errors and they're not super easy to debug. So I highly recommend you go to Chrome and click the three dots, then go to help about Google Chrome and see what version you're on. I'm on version 77. So I'm going to go to Chrome driver 77, open up this directory, and then download Chrome driver Mac 64 since I'm on a Mac. And since it's version 77, it'll work with my version of Chrome. If you don't have the same version, you may see an error like this. Please protect ports used by Chrome driver and related test frameworks for vent access. And uh, running your tests themselves from Elixir, you won't see this error. You'll just see uh, other errors that don't make sense that you don't see with Wallaby. So make sure you've got the same one. Once you've got that, uh, I guess you'll need to unzip the driver, which I've already done because I've, I've already downloaded it before. Then what you'll need to do is make sure that it's in your path. I'm going to move it from my downloads directory Chrome driver to user local bin because that's in my path. Then with that done, we should be able to just use Wallaby Chrome driver. We'll open up a new terminal tab and we'll run mix test. So this is the existing setup that we had. And we'll look at our test.exs config file. See at the very bottom of it, we've got this config Wallaby section. We haven't told it what driver to use. So by default, it's just going to use the PhantomJS driver, which we're going to replace with wallaby.experimental.chrome. And as I said, this is not so experimental anymore. It does support everything. Save that. And now we should be able to run the exact same tests. It'll just use Chrome on the back end and we don't need to change anything in our tests or interface, anything else, just this one line here in the config. And you can see it's actually a bit faster with the experimental Chrome driver. So that is a nice win right there. The Redditor pointed out a few other things though, and I wanna uh, just go through a little bit more of what's in Wallaby because I think some of the things uh, were very useful to know. So let's start by looking at some other things that this find function we're using can do. So this is from the code itself for Wallaby. This is from their, their uh, test for find. And you can see that there are some tests that use find twice. They chain it again. And the reason for this is the first find here is finding the dashboard. It's finding something with a class dashboard. And there's got to only be one of these for this to work as it's written. Then the second find is actually scoped to just looking at what's inside that dashboard. So that's a lot faster than if we were, you know, looking for 
um, all the users on the page. And there might be more than one element that had the class of users on it, uh, but there's only one under the dashboard that has users on it. Then under that, we're doing all instead of find because we've got multiple users. So that is a pretty useful pattern. Another thing that I want to point out is uh, where we've got it, uh, query, inside query. The last episode, I only brought in a single function from wallaby.query, and that was CSS. We use that to find section, and now this isn't a class, this is an HTML element, so there were more than one. I passed the count of how many we expected, and then did an enum.at to get the second, because there's zero index, to get the second element out of there, and then assert that it had something. There's actually a lot more that we can do that uh, I didn't show last episode. So let's just look at a few things that we can do with query. We can actually pass the at to the query itself. We can say, instead of this enum.at, we can do this. We can say the count is three, and we want to get the element that is the second out of what was returned. So we'll run mix test again and get the same result. And if we had at two, well, that one is not going to say welcome to Phoenix in it. The bottom section is something completely different. And we'll see that we got the failure there. And another thing is we can actually look for text inside of the find. So we could have actually put the text inside of here. And that test should work fine. Oh, except of course that there aren't three elements that have the text welcome in it. We were looking for three, but we only found one. Um, what if we said, well, if we said count one, that would obviously pass. But say we had misspelled welcome, then we're going to find zero. We're expecting one element to match all of these criteria, and instead of one, uh, we simply don't have anything that matches that. And we'll just go back to how we had it before. Another thing that's kind of interesting is we can build up these queries one step at a time like this, and then save them in a variable and use them later. So we could do something like say, uh, built query, is equal to CSS. Actually, we're going to need more than just CSS in here if we're going to use those other functions. So I'm going to remove that only. So we're importing all of Volby. So our built query can just be, uh, say, CSS looking for a section. So this will get all the sections. And then we're just going to pass in a count of three. And we'll pass in that we're looking for the element at the location one, which is the second one since it's zero indexed, as I said. And then we can just replace all of this that we had in CSS section with built query. Now, if we wanted to reuse this query, uh, we probably don't want to be specifying the count because maybe in one area of our page, like say we're looking at uh, a list of users. We're looking at list elements. Maybe in one area, we would have a list with 10 elements, and then we want to reuse that query we made, but different place has eight elements. We could change this count so that it will accept any number. So we could change it to the atom any, and now it will accept one item, which is a default, or any other number. So with this kind of query, we could maybe put that into a module attribute and just call it, say, sections. This will get all the sections. And that's going to be CSS section. And then we'll pass this query account of any. And then we can just get rid of our built query here. And instead of using built query, we'll just use these sections. And of course, we've got to say which one we want still. We can just chain that in in line like this and say at one. Then elsewhere, we could reuse the same sections. And those sections might be different sections depending on the test and uh, any previous finds and so forth. 
So that's uh, that's pretty useful. There's a lot of stuff we can do. If you want something uh, that, that truly is dynamic, then you'll probably need to just make a function, something like this. Other than CSS, which is what we've been using this episode and the previous one, we could also use an XPath selector. Uh, there's a new option, data here. We can use data in order to get uh, an HTML data attribute. And that has the advantage of being more stable if you're making a lot of changes to your design. Maybe the structure of your app is going to break all the CSS selectors, but all of those elements might still have the same data attributes on them. And that's pretty much the highlights of what I wanted to go over, but I will link that Reddit comment in the description below so that you can see it in its entirety. And as I said last time, we will be using Wallaby going forward in the Phoenix Trello View project that we're in the middle of. See you next time.